Gears Tactics. So, why is this review so late? Well, <clears throat> unlike some, I actually finished the game before I did a review. Shock. Welcome to Gears Tactics, the latest instalment to the Gears franchise, but this time it's flipped the genre on its head and it's no longer a third person shooter, but a turn based strategy game. Now, before you close the tab and go boring, just know that this game has had me clench up and celebrate a lot. It really does give you a rush. It's not a simple go here, shoot enemy, move on. Put it on the right difficulty and you're going to be glad it's turn based because sometimes you have to really pull off some moves and think hard. As seen here where I save my own unit by grenading it to displace it from being pinned from the enemy locust sniper. Now obviously I have to plug if you ever do get stuck I have an entire guide on my channel for every single mission on insane with no deaths. So clearly I've sunk a good amount of time into this game and review. I'm a long time Gears of War player since its inception in 2006 and a big fan of the game to this day. So if you're thinking about jumping into tactics but wanted a little heads up about what to expect before you downloaded, you definitely came to a good place. There will also be no spoilers here. As someone that has a keen interest in RTS games like StarCraft, games like XCOM and unit control games like Dota, I was certainly excited when this was announced. Gears has needed a reboot for a while. It's constantly changing its formula but never quite enough to really shake it up. If you don't enjoy the third person shooter, you probably won't like any of the other games. But this is different. It goes for a different market and it's a great way to get fans into the universe. Let's start off with two things, the PC options and performance. I know this isn't a hugely important section due to the new console players who will definitely be able to run this, but it's important to show it. Every option I could think of was there, and even on my older system of an i7 4790K and a GTX 970 at 1440p, it ran it very, very well and look good. I'm positive the new Xbox is going to look great. Visually, the game is back to its dark, gritty, immersive and impressive roots. Looking back to the past with destroyed beauty, a staple of the franchise. There is a good amount of gore, executions and explosions to satisfy me. The story is good. It's not some hammy military shooter and it definitely kept me wanting to play and definitely kept me wanting to unlock that next cutscene and learn more about the story. If you've never played Gears before, you might not quite appreciate it as much as myself, but you can definitely have fun and understand it and follow it. But none of this really matters if the gameplay is bad and the price is wrong, does it? Now, currently at the time of voicing, it's available on Steam for £50 and free on Game Pass. Then I would say Game Pass is your best bet. There is a little expansion coming up and there is some replayability later down the line which we'll touch on, but I think if I had to recommend a way to play the game, it would be on Game Pass. Side note, if you're interested in getting Game Pass cheap, I have a video on my channel. I think with no XCOM style multiplayer and generally a lack of replayability apart from the veteran missions and a few achievement hunting things you might want to go for, a £50 price point is a little too steep. The price may change when it releases on console or they may be on sale. I have 94 hours played, even if it costs 60 pounds. That's less than a pound an hour, and I'd argue that's fair. But realistically, in my opinion, around a 30 pound price point is what it should be. So price of entry seems fair. The story was good enough to keep me wanting to get to the next cutscene and keep playing. The graphics and performance were also good. So there's lots of pluses. Now I'm not massively into turn-based games. So I was ready to not enjoy the game. I was ready to say I was bored, but surprisingly, I actually wasn't. So I'll talk you through the difficulty options and what were the good parts, the bad parts of the game, and you can decide if you want to give it a try. So, because I like a challenge, and I thought turn-based games are normally a bit boring, I didn't want to just waltz through the campaign on easy mode and basically play cutscene simulator. Now, I understand there will be many people that want to do that, and that's fine, but I would advise against it. Gears Tactics' strength as a game is in its AI. They're smart, they punish your moves, and they seemingly think ahead. You can sit there and plan out all of these potential lanes of attacks, who to cover who, where to move, and boom, suddenly, one misstep and you're in a pinch. I'm sure the game can be a relaxing turn-based one, with high quality cutscenes, and that will be enough for many, but I felt like if I'm going to review it, I should do it properly. So, I played on the hardest difficulty, Insane, and I got the achievement Immortal Legion, which is complete the campaign on insane difficulty without a single unit dying. This was no cakewalk and I certainly learned a lot during my playtime. So I went straight into insane with no experience and boy oh boy was it difficult. For the first four hours I felt myself wanting to bash my head into the wall as every single unit punished me and one shot me. I was dead, game over, nothing I could do. 
I distinctly remember saying, this is impossible, I must be doing something wrong. It can't be this hard. Sometimes I would have everything perfect, just about ready to head into that truck and a stray bullet would kill a side character. Expendable, but not for me. That meant I had to restart. There was no deaths allowed. Now, I'm not going to try to give you any tips for the game because I feel like that's part of the experience. Learning what tools are strong, how you should play the turns, whether to overwatch, whether to run, plant a grenade, throw one, play defensive, play offensive. All of that is what made it such a fun experience. Putting the so-called run together. It's a very satisfying experience. When you see a Theron Guard walking right at you and you know you need to play the next four turns perfectly or it's game over, then you take his weapon and use it against them. Feels fantastic. I don't think that would have the same impact on a lower difficulty because you can revive your teammates and generally it's way less punishing. So I recommend if you want the full experience, you should try to play on the highest level of difficulty you feel achievable. Now, it was around towards the end of the last act midway through that I did begin to feel a bit tired of the game. In all honesty, I felt the level design became a little bit less classic gears and the formula had been established. Fetch the case mission under the bombs, protect the supply cache or escape. It has around three styles of missions with each one being different but still close enough to each other that I did find myself asking, is this it? Maybe more level focused players would be bored but due to the fact I was focused on the challenge, I was okay. And that's how I think you should be too. The AI is the strength of this game, and I think to mitigate it by a lower difficulty setting doesn't do the game justice. So ultimately, I think if the gameplay wasn't challenging, and I'd put it on that lower setting, I probably would have got bored and given up. That's not to say it's not fun, it just becomes a little bit expected. You know when the mission screen pops up, you know what you're going to get. The environment changes, yes, the level changes, and that obviously impacts how you play, but the style is repetitive. Now, the executions and the chaining of kills, bayonet charges, certainly help to alleviate this issue, as it doesn't matter if you're capturing the hill for the sixth time, seventh time, eighth time, it's still fun to hold that objective, chain kills, and give your teammates action points on action points to do more and more moves. So it's certainly a very well done game in that area. Enemy variety isn't the most crazy I've ever encountered, but there is definitely enough to not get bored. Now, I'm not going to spoil the fun of who you encounter, but I think you will enjoy them. In terms of gameplay, I did have a few issues, but not so many that I would claim that this is a broken, buggy, early access game, because it's clearly not. In my entire run, I encountered a few moments which were these. One where a grenade was labelled to not kill my own teammate, and it did. A locust once shot me through a wall, and I did encounter one game-breaking bug, in the sense that checkpoints would not register. Oh my god! I even looked at my screen and made sure I pressed fucking... Oh my god, mate. Oh. So doing this on insane with no deaths could mean multiple hours lost, and that was my main issue with the game. I scoured the forums, even pinged the developers in their own Discord, and it has been documented on the forum since April, and not fixed. I hope the console release fixes this, because it was only one mission that bugged out in the entire game, and I did find the game to be very well done, polished, and the AI was tough but fair, but I'd hope they get that bug nailed down and fixed. Customization is a good laugh, as it should be in this genre. You may have noticed my Sid in the playthrough was bright green, with a huge variety of armor on him, and Gabe was red and yellow. Well, I was kind of going for the Green Lantern and the Iron Man theme, with a crazy eye patch librarian. There's a good amount to keep you happy here. Glasses, body armor, leg pieces, the lot. Lancers, shotguns, snipers, mulchers, all can be customised from a crit heavy gun to a knockback CC gun to a big barreled suppressive gun. They really did a good job in the customisation department here and it's something Gears has lacked and I really feel like the franchise levelled up in this department. As well as unlocking the free loot boxes from picking them up on the battlefield, allowing you to get better gear for your whole roster. I found these boxes to be impactful enough that I did go for them in missions, but they weren't so necessary, they weren't so overpowered that I had to risk ruining my run to go out of my way to get the gear. Classes, it does a good job of feeling like your class is impactful but not mandatory. 
scouts, snipers, bleed characters, crit characters, full on UIR explosive based characters all feel unique and strong and impactful, but they don't feel necessary. I didn't feel like once, even doing it on an insane difficulty with no deaths, I didn't feel like I was stuck because I had the wrong class or I'd selected the wrong squad. Now certainly some maps suited maybe grenades more or snipers more, and you can back out and recreate those squad, so that was a good idea. And there are respec tools available if you do pick the wrong skill tree, but ultimately I think you'll get by with no matter what you pick as long as if you play it smart. My only gripe was the support class, specifically the healing tree, felt a little bit off. On a lower difficulty, you can revive teammates, so the stim grenade and healing capabilities for downed enemies can be important. On insane though, you can't go down, you can't really rely on a heal because you just one-shot it anyway, so it felt a bit pointless. I understand they probably wanted the healing to be stronger on lower difficulties and a bit weaker on harder difficulties, but it would have been nice to actually been able to use the healing class. The support was sort of more relegated to becoming an empowering class. However, on the flip side, I did just recently discover an insane scout combo, allowing me to chain sprints, cloaks, multiple actions, and again, the same for my supports, managing to chain in powers with each other. On top of the cooldown armor, allowing me to do multiple combos, I didn't really realize it was possible. So the point is that there are very good ways to combo classes and maybe even the healers are good and I just never experimented enough with them. I don't want to bore you and bog you down breaking down every single aspect of the game in excruciating detail because ultimately I enjoyed the game and I would recommend it. Overall it's a Gears game that really does a good job of modernising the franchise and it feels a very natural step for it to take. The game definitely suits this genre and I'd like to see more. It took me 94 hours to complete the game on Insane with no deaths and a few veteran missions and a few side achievement hunting missions on top. And yes, it does lack the XCOM style multiplayer, but it's definitely still worth it. I don't really like giving number ratings because it's a little bit hard to grasp for the user. If I review a game and I rarely give out 7s, then a 7 might be a very good score on my scale. But if you watch somebody else who gives 7s to a truly awful game, then you might see my 7 and think, oh, this game's bad. So I don't like to give a review a number. I just prefer to show the gameplay, chat about it, and let you decide. So let's see. It's a real good spin on the Gears of War genre. You don't need to be a Gears fan to enjoy it, but it certainly adds to the experience. It is slightly repetitive come the end of the game, but by that point, you've probably sunk enough hours into the game that you're close enough to want to push it home. It's a great game, and I'm looking forward to seeing more from the turn-based Gears of War side of things. Thanks for listening. As always, if you enjoyed this content, you can give it a like, give it a comment. There are ways in the description to support me. I'm a small YouTuber, so, you know, ad revenue, ad sense is basically non-existent. So, there are ways to directly support, and as always, I hope to see you back in the next video. Lastly, if you are struggling with the game and you do want to pick up some tips and tricks, do check out the playlist of all of the missions on Insane With No Deaths. You might just learn a thing or two. Let me know what you think about Gears Tactics in the comments below and will you be picking up the game come launch? Thanks for watching. Peace.